Yeah, I mean, if you want to have a great start of the next year, you have to be prospecting harder than you've ever prospected right this second. That's the only way you're gonna have the highest yield, the highest amount of closings that they reach your full potential for January 2022. If you're really, see right now is the market's kind of slowing it. No, if, if you're not prospecting right at the highest velocity that you possibly can right now, th this is the best time because the market has slowed, right? Which means that your prospecting should rise. Um, it's a seesaw battle at, at all times. But back to the fear thing, yeah, I ask agents, and I say, you know, okay, you're scared of what? Um, please do tell. And the answer, I'm telling you, it is pretty much every single time they say the exact same thing. They say, I don't know. What are you scared of? I don't know. And I don't know if they tell me that because they're scared to tell me what they're scared of and that's their default or if there's some kind of, if they really don't know, I hadn't figured it out. But I said, come on, give me something. And so then they say, well, rejection. And I think, well, what's so bad about that? Rejection is not rejection. Number one, objections aren't objections and rejections not rejection. Okay, you're calling it that and you're using that as an excuse not to make calls for a reason you don't know. Rejection and objections are just your prospect telling you what they want to do. Instead of thinking about that in a negative sense, think about it as direct orders. <laughs> They're telling you what they want to do. Now take that information and help them do it. Right? It's, it's insane. What do you think, I mean, you're in the business and you, you hear a lot of stuff. What, what do you think the biggest fear, rejection, comeback, or not comeback, but what, what's like a prospect, you call and a prospect says what that, that scares agents? There's a sense of professionalism here, right? There's a sense of, okay, we are a business. If we all we do offer a service then we do want to offer this service to as many people as we can to see what we can do to help them right and so it, i mean you don't know what to say tell them you're an agent you help people buy and sell real estate and you just want to call and see what you can do to help them i mean you could just default to that if you want to this whole thing about listen it, it, i'll tell you what it is everybody has that same exact emotion in the beginning that's the problem. And the winners say, okay, I'm going to make calls anyway, even though I have this fear that I don't know what to say, I'm still going to make the calls because I know that's what's going to get me to the top. And so they bust through that little stage. And then as they make calls, they learn what to say because they're making calls. It's a chicken and egg thing, right? You can't know what to say until you make the calls, but most agents are scared to make the calls because they don't know what to say. You can't have both. You have to make the calls, right? But let me take it a step further. If you're not making calls because you feel a little bit uncomfortable about making calls, you go home and tell your kids that, that I, I'm not living up to my full potential and helping you have the best quality of life that you could possibly have because I don't feel 100% about making calls. I, you know, I'm scared an alligator is going to jump out of the bushes and bite me if I, if I make calls today or somebody's going to you know, shoot me with a with a dart or, um, you know, uh, you know, UFC guy is going to come punch me or something. If I make calls, none of that's ever happened and, and, and nothing's going to happen. If you make calls, nobody's ever died from making calls. And so if you're going to go home and look at your, look at your child in the eye, look at your husband in the eye, look at your wife, look at your coworkers in the eye and say, I'm not living up to my full potential, right? Because I, I feel just a little bit of discomfort to do the one thing that I know that's going to put me at the top. Then you got to be the one that lives with that at the end of the day. I'm not, I can't live like that. I got I to gotta sleep at night knowing I did everything I could do to make sure that we have the best life that we could possibly have and that I am living up to my full potential. That's just me. I can't tell other people how to live. So do it. Now, if you want to be the most selfish person right in the business world, go to your desk, look at the phone, think about calling and not call because you feel a little uncomfortable. If that's the most selfish act that you could possibly have, I feel a little bit uncomfortable, so I'm not gonna make calls to provide the best life for my family, and I'm gonna suffer myself as well. What? Are you kidding me right now? You know, wake up, 
get up, go get on the phone, make, dude, I was making calls for eight hours a day, hand dialing. It took, I, I, listen, I dialed a hundred numbers so many days, I know how long it takes to hand dial. When I hear people say I hand dialed a hundred numbers in three hours, I call BS. I've been there. I have done it. I know how long it takes. You need to wake up every morning and realize how much fun this is. Well, if you go in and think cold calling or calling people and you're thinking, oh no, you know, somebody might reject me. This is fun. This is a chore. I don't like this. Then it's not going to be fun. But if you, if you take the phone and you say, I'm going to go help some people today, right? I can't wait to get on the phone and talk to some people and see what in the world they got going on, see how they're doing, let them know how I'm doing and see if there's anything I can do to help them today, right? And when you have those bad calls, which is going to be, you know, a couple, then you laugh it off and you, and you get, psh, now look at my calls. I mean, I, people hang up on me. I call them back. We're laughing the whole time, having fun, drinking tea. It's, it's, it's not a big deal. Nobody's ever died from this, right?